Welcome back. The next topic I want to discuss is what's called an FCPS, which stands for Field Charger Power Supply. I will put that up here. Uh, let's see. That's the, as usual, that's the notifier or firelight terminology. Um, other companies like Edwards uses a BPS, which is a booster power supply. Um, I think, I think Simplex might call it a NAC extender. Um, they all, all manufacturers have a product like this. And the point of it is the, the primary use for it is if your fire alarm control panel does not have enough power to power all of your NACs or your horns and strobes um, that's needed in a building. So maybe you're in a library or a school, it doesn't matter, but you need several floors worth of horn strobes and your the fire alarm control panel you're using is limited to maybe, I don't, it, it, it's a little bit complicated, but let's just say four amps of um, power for the NACs. Usually that's not how the power is distributed. Usually it's some combination of power drawn between your NACs and your, your non-resettable power, your resettable power, uh, your battery charger, etc. But, you know, maybe your panel could, could handle, just for the sake of argument, 40 horn strobes, but you need 120, whatever. So they make two, Notifier and Firelight make two um, basic FCPSs. Um, it's, it's either a 6 or an 8 amp FCPS, and that's the short term use. So that's if you're using it for the purpose that I just described, which is horn strobes. Um, sometimes you'll, you, you'll, they'll have these things continuously powered up and use them for power, um, like to power door holders or something like that. If it's continuous use power, you have, um, I think, 2 amps less. So if you have the 6 amp model, you only can use 4 amps of it at for you know continuously and if you have the 8 amp model you can only use 6 amps of it but basically you could see from hopefully this is clear I the the, the software I used to um, to capture this is not HD I don't believe so sometimes hopefully once this gets uploaded that you could still read all the little um, all the little labels that I have up here but um, at the top here top left this is just the, the ace uh, I'm on the wrong tool do that all the time. Top here, this is just your AC, so you'd have hot, neutral, and your ground connection. I'm not going to take the time to draw that because it's pretty straightforward. Then uh, the next thing I'm circling here are your four NAC outputs. So these are where you would connect your horn strobes and strobes. To the right of that is trouble contact, which I'll probably describe at some point. I don't think I'm going to describe that in this video. And then you have this big bank of terminals down here. And this is where you would trigger your power supply. This is how you would control it and turn it on. Um, there's a lot going on here because there are a lot of different things you can do with this FCPS. And right now my intention is to, you know, I, I intend to make videos describing a lot of the major uses of these things. Um, right now I want to focus on the most common use which is just as uh, I guess a NAC extender you know a, a way to add more horn strobes to your system the way you trigger this basically this thing needs to know when to turn on if it's being used for horn strobes it needs to know when it should turn on the outputs work the same way as a fire alarm panel where it has some supervisory voltage and current going through end line resistors so each one of these would have an end line resistor if it's not being used um, the, this is all drawn class B, I guess I should say. There are cards that you can install to make it class A, but that's very uncommon. Um, so this would have some supervisory voltage. When it goes on, when it goes into alarm, the voltage reverses and the polarity reverses and the voltage increases. So you would then have 24 volts coming out of each, um, you know, coming off each terminal. The most common way that these are triggered, these things need a reverse polarity signal to turn them on. So you can see down here, there's, uh, right, I'm looking down here right now, there's input one and output one. Then you have input two, um, I guess there's no output two, which makes sense, and I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but in, most commonly, the most common thing you'll see is it being triggered on input one. 
and you'll see in a minute what the output would be for. If uh, You could trigger a whole string of these. You could have five of them on a wall together, come into the first one, go out to the second one, and then that output would go to the input of the next one and the output, etc. cetera. Um, but, but we're going to focus on triggering one of these things with one fire alarm control panel right now. Um, at some point I'll probably get into these dip switches. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do with this. Um, and then you have you have lights down at the bottom on, on down here that, that show you some of the different trouble messages that you can uh, that this thing will generate. And anytime this goes into trouble, there are contacts between terminal three down here and terminal five, which is the input positive and the input I mean in the output positive, which are connected until this goes into trouble. When this goes into trouble, these two terminals, which are internally connected, that opens up and becomes a, a normally open, um, uh, normally open is not really the term I, I want to use, but th those would no longer be connected if there was a trouble. And also, this is important, if this is not an alarm. So in a standby state, when the input is not triggered and being told that it's on, terminals 5 and 3 are connected when the panel is secure, meaning there's no faults on any of the wiring, the output wiring, no shorts, no ground faults, etc. Um, the batteries, those are those are, have proper voltage, and the charger's not in trouble. So they have their own batteries. They have primary and secondary power. Um, uh, the, I already said ground fault. So basically, if any condition, if, if any trouble condition occurs, that's going to open up. There's trouble contacts at the top too, but these do different things depending on these dip switch settings. So we're not going to get into that right now. So let's look at I'm, I'm, because that uh, the drawing that I made here took up so much space, I'm going to scroll down, um, and I made it a little bit smaller so that you can still see all of the outputs and all of the inputs down here. And then to the left, I have a small fire alarm control panel. So if we were going to trigger this, we wanted to use one of these. The most common thing that you would do is use one of these horn outputs or NAC outputs on this panel and go into the input of this FCPS. So I'm going to take negative, and go to the negative terminal, and then positive and go to the positive terminal. Now if this was the only FCPS in the chain, I, I need an endline resistor, right? If this panel is going to be in trouble if it doesn't see an endline resistor. Let's assume we're not using NAC2 right now. So that's got to be dummied out. So there's a resistor there, but NAC1 is going to be in trouble if I don't have an N-line resistor. So what I do is I put my N-line resistor on this output. So basically terminals 4 and 6 are connected. Oh, this thing is so frustrating. Sorry. Terminals 4 and 6 are connected internally the input and output. Terminals 3 and 5, the input positive and the output positive, are connected, again, provided that this is not in trouble. So now, as I explained before, well, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have uh, erased that resistor because we do need that. As I explained before, this FCPS, in order to go, in order to activate, needs 24 volts power. That's not true. It doesn't need 24 volts, but it needs um, some range I could look it up, but it needs it needs a reverse polarity input. So, so right now, as we we've already learned about NACs, that this positive and negative are actually reversed in a standby state on this panel. When they go in, when this panel goes into alarm and this NAC turns on, the polarity is going to reverse, and it's going to generally increase depending on your panel. And now you'll have 24 volts positive going onto this terminal, which is going to put this into alarm and turn on all of the NAC outputs. If there's any trouble. Let's say NAC1 doesn't see a resistor. If we get, an, you know, we had the resistor, but then that, that opens up, it goes into trouble. Now these terminals 5 and 3 are going to open up, and what that's going to do is show up on this panel as an open circuit. It's going to say open circuit NAC1. So it's, pr it's a pretty common trouble. If I went to a service call and saw open circuit NAC1, the first thing I'm going to ask myself is, is this NAC1 tripping a power supply? Because it's really common to see the batteries fail um, or some trouble on the FCPS other than an actual NAC fault, which it could still be a NAC fault, but any trouble at all is going to show up as open circuit NAC1. Whether it's batteries, ground fault, AC fail, 
um, short circuit on one of the outputs, whatever the case may be, it's going to show up as a NAC1 trouble. So looking at the time, I think that's where I'm going to stop this video. I will see you in the next video.